Hey, Steve Zook here. Welcome back to Pokes Your Channel. Hey, I want to talk about a term that I actually thought of myself and copyrighted and trademarked. I've never heard anybody else use it called phrase memory. It kind of involves learning how to make your guitar playing become an extension of your nervous system. I've had this conversation with uh, one of the guys from Strunz and Farrar, Otter Shear Farrar, who's a really great guitar player. I've had this conversation with Alan Hallsworth before on the phone and there's really something to it that you play you practice and get to the point where you're playing becomes an extension of your nervous system to do that it takes a lot of repetition and uh, if you want to discover about this phrase memory here, here, here's a little experiment you can try and this this is really an interesting thing to do take a look here's a diminished like one three four one two four one three four okay so and uh, I'm just here. Doesn't this is probably not concert pitch. That's my A. This this is the one three four one two four diminished lick. Okay, and here's the lick. It's a little sequence scale. You're gonna have to learn it. By the way, you know, all licks, you're not, a lot of players, I think, play too much with their fingers. I mean, I heard this lick in my mind before I even learned how to do it physically, and that's a, that's a huge point. Think about that, everybody. You know, like if you hear a scale sound, you know, in, in your mind, like practice in your mind as well as practice on the guitar. But I, I heard this idea, you know, this, uh, this idea here. to come up the minor third but what you want to do is you want to play that like 30 40 50 times every day and you got to play it slow enough so it's clean I like doing it all down strokes for definition here again is my A if you want to, if you want to try to sync up with me I know I'm not a concert pitch but here's the notes you're going to be using one three four one two four one three four one but you hear the lick. It's hard for me to do it slow. See that that's not a lick that you're just gonna fall into. So my point being here that you know a lot of people play with their fingers. You know what kind of you know, and I'm not saying that's all bad, but you really want to. You know George Benson's a great example. I know George Benson's always humming everything he plays, but I mean sure you'll you'll fall into some ideas that might be or you know you kind of from just looking at your fingers and what. I'm not saying that's nothing is black and white in my mind. But I'm, all my point just being is that, you know, this was a lick I never would have ran into if I hadn't visualized the idea in my mind first. Now, if you, you've got to play that clean 30, 40 times a day. And I'm not saying slop through it clean. When you first do it, kind of think of these separate parts. I mean, seriously, I mean, I guess you have to be a little, you know, I mean, repetition's a mother of mastery, and if you want to take your guitar playing to a really high level, there's lots of things that you should do. But one of them, obviously, is practice very, very slow. I happen to believe daily meditation is a big help, too. You look at players like John McLaughlin, I know he meditates. And I'm not saying that every great guitar player has to meditate. But, you know, if somebody asked me for all the keys and how I reach the level I'm at, that would be one of them, definitely. You know, meditation every day. You know, keeping things down to a dull roar. Anyway, here's the lick. <laughs> I made a little mistake that that one doesn't count. But if you practice, like when I first learned this lick, I was going about this fast. And 
I was having to think of every little part of it. Well, as I practiced that for a couple, two or three days, all of a sudden I could kind of relax. And I was kind of thinking of this as one idea. That's why I kind of call it phrase memory. That that's one idea in my. It became one idea in my brain. Next idea. Okay, and so. As you practice this event, and, and last night I was super, super warmed up, and I was playing this riff in, in the bathroom upstairs, and I don't know about you, but I am extremely inspired by Mr. Barotta the Grin, and, uh, but I was doing this riff last night after being really warmed up, and it was just really peeling off, and uh, it was really exciting and fun to hear that result of all my hard practice. I felt like I was kind of getting a little bit of Barotta the Grin uh, approach to that riff. I think he's just an absolutely unbelievable player. Probably one of the best, if not the best, on the planet. I hate to put it that way, but even John McLaughlin said he's a guitar phenomenon, you know. I mean, he was a gypsy. He's a gypsy. He sat around a campfire 14 hours a day and played guitar. Some people think he's Django reincarnated anyway. My, the idea is, I mean, I hear a lot of great guitar players on YouTube, but every once in a while I hear pe people that do a lot of really, really nice stuff, but I never hear them really burn. I never hear them really play something that you just kind of, you know, your jaw just drops and you're just like, whoa, that seems impossible. I'm not saying that you have to be a monster technical person to play sweet. There's some people that just play so sweet, they never play too fast, but it just sounds so nice. It's wonderful. All I'm saying is that I, I enjoy once in a while using technique. And, uh, you know, making, there's a certain exciting component to guitar playing when you can really use some strong technique, but you got to develop that technique. So this is, you know, I challenge all my subscribers, have some fun with me to explore phrase, phrase, uh, phrase memory by doing this like, you know, 40, 50 times a day. chromatically and by the way practice it with your hand tucked in like here you know you can also have your fingers flaring out like this but also practice it with the fingers tucked in because that just you know that trains your right hand it, it, it creates more what's called economy of movement Sure, sometimes when I'm like playing a million miles an hour and I'm not going to try to do it right now because I'm not that warmed up, I'll let my fingers flare out. And sometimes I even kind of like the way that feels for my right hand, you know. But it's like I used to be a gymnast. I used to be a ring man. We used to always have a philosophy, you know, do, do things the hard way as well as the easy way. And uh, so also practice with your hand tucked in. So that do this lick 40, 50 times a day and do it slow, everybody. Slow, 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 slow. Again, here... By the way, look, look, at, look at the back of this guitar. I'm probably just going to keep this guitar. But this guitar is insane. And this, this is an old early 50s K. And it's a laminate back saw on the top. But man, it sounds unbelievable. Which is why these lore guitars that I sell, you know, once they start to open up and you play them, they really start to open up and sound great and get this overtone series going. Hear that? That's the riff, 40, 40, 50 times a day. You, when you first learn it, you'll be doing it like this. And try to hum that. Or at least hum it in your head. And just write one, three, four. One, three, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, two, four. Those are the notes. Okay? So you kind of, with your brain, look at those notes and then start getting these small little individual phrases right because like i said you know some of the best riffs that you'll learn are not things that you're just going to fall into you just happen to be falling into them like, like that's a riff like i said i never would have come up with that riff if i wouldn't have actually heard the idea and sat down and worked it out. You know, you have to work out ideas. They don't just happen. 
Um, you know, you, you, you watch the great players out there and they do some of their monster riffs and they didn't just fall together. They, they spent hours and hours and hours working on that. So that's my point, all right? To me, I, I love nothing more than spending, you know, an hour on one idea. And that's, you know, learning to play great guitar or anything in life is really about learning how to concentrate. It's a focused laser beam concentration and that's a, that's a huge thing. And you'll get more of that, by the way, if you learn to kind of fine-tune your, your energies. That's why I believe in meditation. Okay, all right. I think I'm just keeping this guitar because I just love it. It's so sweet. But um, if you need a great arch top, you can buy a lore from me. Or I've got lots of other stuff, lots of great used stuff. I think I've got three or four Ks, actually. I might let some of the other ones go. Anyway, take care. And again, thank you so much to everybody who's bought a guitar for me. I appreciate it. And let's all keep the positive faith. And, uh, you know, stay positive. Cheers.